Welcome to this session on creating a simple form model. So in this session, we're going to place a few points to define an arc. And then from that arc, we'll define the form or massing of the building. Now the generative components model is in the DGN format, which means that we can reference other DGN models just as if we were in MicroStation Art Building Designer. So the first thing we're going to do here now that we have our base coordinate system is we're just going to reference a 2D site plan so that we have a base to work over top of. I'm going to come up here and change my workflow to building design. And I'm going to select my reference dialog. And I'm going to do an attach reference. And you'll notice in your work set folder here, there's a supplement folder. Select that and select the designs folder. And you should see in there a csite.dgn. So I'm going to select that csite.dgn and open that up. You may want to save the relative path. And we're just going to attach that coincident, no nesting, and select OK. And I could do a fit view now, and I can see that 2D site plan. And we're going to work on this portion of the site here. So the mass model we're going to create here is going to be a simple arc form. We'll think of it as a, a hotel. And so to get this started, we're going to place three points in our model here that will be used to define that arc form. So I'm going to set my workflow here back to the computational design. And from the Home tab, I'm going to select the Point tool. Now by default, it's going to place these points on our x, y plane of the base coordinate system. So if you look down here in the lower left hand corner, you can see this identifies your active plane. So I'm just going to place a point here and another one here and another one here. And then a right click will reset. So when working in generative components, we're much less concerned initially about actual dimensions. It's much more important to establish the relationships between elements because it's easy to change the location of these points later. And I should see on my graph three new points, point one, point two, and point three. And I can go over to my transactions player and record that as the next transaction in the script. Now that I have those three points established, I could actually create an arc using those three points. Now for the arc, I'm going to go to this node types tab. And here we get all the nodes that we could place in this model. So in the, the top portion of the dialog here are all the geometry nodes. You can see we have arcs and B splines, surfaces, lines, circles, and so forth. So we're going to select the arc node. I'm just going to click on it left click, and it places that arc node on my graph, arc one. You'll notice it has a little icon that indi indicates it's still under construction. It's incomplete, and that's because we haven't yet given the inputs of how to create that arc. So the first thing I'm going to do is give the node a name. It's important as you create your geometry in generative components to give these nodes meaningful names so that you can go back later and, and manipulate the correct node. Now there are certain rules to the naming. Names must begin with a letter. They may not contain spaces and they are case sensitive. So keep that in mind. So oftentimes we use what's called camel case where we just capitalize the first letter of each word. So I'm going to click in that name field and I'm going to change this from arc one and call it arc base. This is the arc that's establishing the base of our mass model. The second pull down you'll see here is what's called a technique. So there are various techniques. If you pull that down, you'll see a list of different techniques. And these are all just different ways you might create an arc, right? It could be created with a center and, and a, a sweep angle or with just three points as we have here. So you need to find a technique that matches the inputs that you currently have. For instance, we have three points, but also one that will give you the ability to manipulate the arc 
downstream in the way that you want to. So for instance, in this case, we will be able to move those points and modify this arc. On the other hand, if I had used a technique that included a radius, then perhaps I could, I could change the radius value as a way of manipulating the arc. So if I scroll up here, we'll find we have a technique which is points on a curve that needs a start point, a point on the curve, and an end point, which is exactly what we have. So I'm going to select that as my technique. And then I can simply link these points up. So if I hover over my first point here, point one, and to the right of the name there is a, a field where I can click, and now I have a wire coming from that, and I can link that to this input of the start point. That's how I link that up. And I can go either way. I could start here with points on curve and link that back to point two, and then select the end point and link that back to point three. And now my art is generated because I've completed all the inputs. And I'll go back to the transactions player and record that as the next transaction. So now that we have that arc in our model, we can use that as the basis or the baseline of a freeform that will make the mass of the model. So I'm going to switch back to the node types. And this time I'm going to use this freeform node. Now before I place this on the graph, I'm going to select the icon up here, which automatically will open the node properties whenever I place a new node on the graph. So I've selected that on, and I'm going to then select the freeform node. It places that node on my graph. But notice that it opens another dialog, which is all the properties or inputs for that node. Now that's the same inputs that exist here on the node, but they're just a li little easier to access in this dialog. And I could go ahead and dock this along with the node types and the transactions. So I'm going to rename this node and call it form hotel. Then I will set the technique to by curve so we can link it up to our arc base. So I'm going to simply select the arc base and link that to the curve input. Now it also needs a height and a width for that form. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in a value here. If you hover your cursor over the input, a little field will pop up and you can type in there. So I'm going to put 100 feet or 30 meters. And for the width, I'll put 30 feet or 10 meters. And that generates the form. Note that our top here is set to fixed height, so it reads the values that we just input. I could also use one of the two other options, which would be to connect it to another shape or to a plane. And then I would have to add those inputs as well. I'm going to come over to the node properties now to look at some of the other inputs. One is the alignment, so which side of my baseline I want to create. So I'm going to leave it to the right. And I may want to assign a part, a family and part, to this form. So I'm just going to pull down the input there, and I should see a list of all the families and parts in my data set. So I'm going to scroll down to the schematic design family and select the massing solid part. And that should change the symbology of the form based on the family and part information. Then I'll go over to the transactions and record that as the next transaction in the script. Now to see how that form is linked to those initial points that we placed, I'm going to come up to my home ribbon and select the move icon. And I could select any one of those points and begin to move it. Now, if you'll notice, those points have various handles on them. And those handles are important because it determines how you can move the point. So if I select one of the axis handles, I will only be able to move the point along that axis. So for instance, in this case, I can only move along my x-axis. Or if I selected the y-axis, I could move along the y-axis. Move over to the top view here so you can see there's also a plane handle. So in this case, we'd like to select the XY plane. We don't want to be moving in the Z direction. 
And then another option if I want to ensure that I never move those points off the XY plane, that I wouldn't accidentally move them in the Z direction, I could actually come back to those point nodes and change the Z translation. So you'll notice that has a, a function here which is free and I can just delete that so that it's always at zero and it doesn't allow me to move it from there. I'm going to do that on each of these points and then we'll look in the model and see how that actually changes the handles that are available. So you can see now if I look at my handles I no longer have a z-axis or the xz or yz plane as a handle, I only have the handles for moving in the x and y direction. So once I've, I've moved those points around to achieve the arc that I want, I can come back to my transactions tab and record those changes. So we've set up an initial mass model. We've got the basic form in there. It's tied to three points that we can control. But if you recall, we, we sort of hard-coded the, the height and the width of that form. What we'll do in the next session is create some sliders so that we can adjust the height and width very quickly as well. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.